while laws regarding the imposition of capital punishment in the state of New York are still on the books. It is no longer enforced as it has been declared unconstitutional in the state, and this ruling has not been overturned. The last execution took place in 1963, when Eddie Lee Mays was electrocuted at Sing Sing Prison. The state was the first to adopt the electric chair as a method of execution, which replaced hanging. Following the U.S. Supreme Court's ruling declaring existing capital punishment statutes unconstitutional in Furman v. Georgia and its subsequent ruling on specific conditions states had to meet for revised statutes in Gregg v. Georgia, New York was without a death penalty until 1995, when Governor George Pataki signed a new statute into law which provided for execution by lethal injection. On June 24, 2004, the state's highest court ruled in People v. Lavalli that the state's death penalty statute violated the state constitution. And New York has had no valid statute relating to capital punishment since then. Subsequent legislative attempts at fixing or replacing the statute have failed, and in July 2008 Governor David Patterson issued an executive order disestablishing New York's death row. Legislative efforts to amend the statute have failed, and death sentences are no longer sought at the state level. Though certain crimes that fall under the jurisdiction of the federal government are subject to the federal death penalty. The last woman hanged in the state of New York was Roxalana Drews. Roxalana Roxana Drews was born on 1847. She was the last woman hanged in the state of New York. The first woman to be hanged in four decades in central New York, her botched execution resulted in the decision to replace the gallows with the electric chair in 1890. Mrs. Drews murdered her husband, William Drews, in their home in Warren, New York. The murder unfolded with the help of her son and daughter, George and Mary Drews, and nephew Frank Gates. The family members were threatened with death if they refused and all had an involvement with the murder case. Drews claimed that her motive was that her husband was abusive to her and was not supporting the family because he had left for a number of days after an argument. Frank Gates and George Drews were later released due to their lack of involvement in the murder. During the trial, Mary Drews admitted to assisting in the murder, and was sentenced to life at the Onondaga Country Penitentiary. On October 6, 1885 Roxalana was sentenced to be hanged on November 25, 1885, but after several changes she was set to die in the electric chair on February 28, 1887. On December 18, 1884, on the morning before the murder, the Drisses had a fight. Fights were common between them, and many residents reported signs of foul play. The couple were known in the community for their arguments and disagreements. During this dispute, Roxalana concealed a revolver under her apron, which she placed in another room. Upon instruction from his mother, 10-year-old George Drews left the house while his 19-year-old sister Mary remained in the house. Mary then tied a rope around her father's neck while Mrs. Drews fired the revolver, wounding Mr. Drews. She then forced her 14-year-old nephew Frank Gates to further fire at her husband. Pleading for help and unable to move, Mr. Drews was decapitated by his wife with an axe. The body parts were taken into the parlor, where they remained all day until Mrs. Drews cut up the body and burned it to ash on the stove. 
She also burned William's clothes to further destroy evidence and erase evidence of his presence from the house. The conspirators produced false documents which read that Mr. Drews had left the house after an argument and his whereabouts were unknown. In order to further the idea that William disappeared, Roxalana threatened that she would kill her daughter and the boys if they admitted to the crime. The ashes were dumped in a nearby swamp, while the axe and the revolver were wrapped up and dumped in a pond. William Drews was later reported missing by the police on the same day. Investigation led to the murder weapon, an axe sold previously to William Drews, wrapped in paper in a pond, along with the revolver. Multiple allegations were reported against wife Roxalana, yet due to lack of evidence, nothing was officially reported. On January 16, 1885, Frank Gates admitted to the crime after consistent harassment by neighbors. Gates and Mrs. Drews were arrested and brought to trial on September 21, 1885. The trial lasted nearly two weeks. When Drews was sentenced to death in her Kimmer County, New York, suspension hanging was the method of execution. The process jerked the prisoner upwards by a weighted rope instead of the dropping the body, dropping through a trap door. But Drews was a small woman, and the suspension force failed to break her neck, leaving her to die agonizingly by strangulation. The scene was so upsetting, officials decided to switch the primary method of execution in New York to the electric chair. Thank you for watching Death Row.